Game hoarding. It's a fairly common issue and I, like many others, have amassed a massive pile of unplayed games over the years. Now, even though I have all of these games, I only end up going back to the same old games that I know that I liked beforehand. Now, this kind of sucks, and I would want to play the games that I've spent my hard-earned money on, so to deal with this, I list all of my unplayed games on Google Sheets, pick 4 games by random, force myself to play them, and take you guys along for the experience. I made a separate video about this where I dive deeper about why it is that we don't end up playing most of the games that we buy, so this is kind of like a sequel to that where I play some more games to chip away at my backlog. So if you're interested to hear more about why I'm doing this, please check the first part out. You guys seem to really like that video and I like making it so I might as well make this a series on my channel. So let's start off by laying down some ground rules for the series. First, the list includes all of the games that I've bought and some of the games that I have access to via other means. All of the games on the list are ones that I either haven't played at all or I've only played a little but have no recollection of playing them. When it comes to games I have access to via PlayStation Plus, I don't feel like they're at the same level as the games that I have on Steam where I've consciously made the decision to buy them. So. I have went through every game on there and added the games that I'm at least vaguely interested in to the list. Also for the games with sequels in PlayStation Plus, I'm only including one of them to the list. So if I get one, I'll just end up playing the first one or one of them. Second, I'm not finishing the games if I don't like them. The point of this series is not to force myself to complete every game in my library, but to find out if there are some great games that I'm missing out on. So, I don't really see a reason for finishing them if I'm not enjoying it. If I don't like it, I just don't like it. And third, I'm not including games that I've already decided to play on this list. And that's just because it kind of defeats the point of the challenge. For example, I'm not going to put Silk Song on here when it comes out, because I'm going to play it regardless, as it is a much higher priority game for me than anything on this list. So, let's move on to the list. Here are all of the games that I have, but I haven't played yet. This includes games from my Steam library and PlayStation Plus, and I've played all of the games that I have on Switch, so none of those are on here. And here's the Google Sheets formula that I'll use to randomize them. I'll basically pick a random number between 1 and 78, and then display the game and what platform I have it on next to the number on the list. So, let's start. For the first game, I got Bloodstained, The Ritual of the Night. I think this game is a metroidvania and it had a buggy launch or something, but other than that, I don't know much about it. The second game is 20 Minutes Till Dawn. I'm not familiar with it, Steam just recommended it to me and I bought it because I like the pixel art, art style. The third game is Fantavision. I'm pretty sure that this is like an old rhythm game or something on PS2. And the final game is Omori. I don't know what this game is about, but this is one of those games that I bought just because I thought the art style looked cool. Alright, so now I'll play all of the games and come back to you with my takes, which should take about a week, so I'll see you soon. Bloodstained, The Ritual of the Night is a metroidvania made by Japanese indie studio Artplay, released in 2019. It leans heavily on the Vania side of the metroidvania scale, which isn't a surprise since the development was led by Koji Igarashi, who worked on the original Castlevania series. You play the game as Miriam, a human fused with demonic crystals who fights against demons who are attacking the humans in this world. I gotta be honest with you, I can't really go into depth with the story for you guys, because I didn't really find it interesting at all, but to me at least, that didn't really feel like the point of the game to begin with. The game is just a lot of fun to play. The metroidvania formula is popular for a reason, and when it's executed to this level, it's just super enjoyable. The map is huge, there's a lot of stuff to explore, tons of enemy variety, and some of the bosses are great as well. 
What really stands out in this game is the amount of variety you can have in terms of builds. So every time you kill a demon, you have a chance of getting the demon's crystal as a drop, which in a Kirby-like way allows you to use an ability related to the demon that you killed. You collect a lot of these during the game and you can mix and match to figure out which combinations you like. To me this was a really fun mechanic that really allows you to switch up your gameplay if it starts getting monotonous. And it probably will feel a bit monotonous at times due to the difficulty balancing in this game, which seems to be a bit all over the place at times. I faced my first challenge in the second boss fight in this game, fighting the samurai dude who gave me some trouble but I ultimately beat him in a handful of tries. This had me feeling like oh, it's only the second boss so it's probably gonna get a lot harder from now on. The next 6 hours of gameplay were like disappointingly easy, until I finally hit another difficult boss and this time I was stuck for like 30 attempts. And the boss directly after that I killed with like 4 spells and no difficulty at all. I haven't finished the game yet, but I think I'm pretty close to the end. So I don't know about the final bosses yet, but like 90% of the game so far has been very easy with some random and actually really fun difficulty spikes sprinkled in. I feel like this game would have benefited from a more linear progression in terms of difficulty. Because a lot of the easy parts just end up feeling kind of underwhelming when I know that the game is capable of being challenging in a really fun way. Aesthetically, the game is beautiful. The environments are detailed and distinct and the 3D art style set in a 2D space fits this game really well, plus the music for the most part is very pretty. I was also surprised by how silly this game is, while at the same time maintaining this super melodramatic gothy aesthetic. Like, you're this kind of edgy half-demon trying to save humanity, but the vibe is just a bit off. Like some of the enemy designs just look goofy as hell, and some of the dialogue on here is surprisingly comedic, which feels really out of place in this game, but kind of in a good way. Also, some of the music on here is so dramatic that it almost felt funny to me. I didn't expect this at all, and to be honest, I really enjoyed this aspect of the game. I feel like the experience would have been a lot more boring if the game just took itself super seriously, which is what I kind of expected, so I'm really happy to have my expectations subverted like this. When it comes to metroidvanias and 2D combat in general, the genre has been kind of ruined for me by Hollow Knight, so I can't help but to compare them a little bit. Some actions in Bloodstained just feel kind of clunky and dated, and it took a little while to get used to it. But once I got over it, it started feeling a lot better and eventually got the job done in the end. I know some Metroidvania fans hate the comparison, but I don't think this or really any other Metroidvania I've played comes close to the fluidity and freedom of movement of Hollow Knight, and to be honest they don't have to. All in all, I enjoyed this game. Uh, Bloodstained is a very fun game with great style and if you like Castlevania or Metroidvanias in general, I definitely recommend you try it as well. 20 Minutes Till Dawn is a roguelike survival game made by developer Flan. It's still in early access, so I'm sure that there'll be more changes to this game after this, since it's not finished yet, so just keep that in mind. In this game, you pretty much just shoot at incoming waves of different enemies and bosses while leveling up and picking new skills as you progress. You beat the run if you survive for 20 minutes. There's some build variety with all of the different abilities and tools you can get through the leveling system. You could go for a build that just shoots big damage bullets everywhere or maybe a shotgun build that stacks HP and HP scaling damage skills or you can just let your summons do all the work. There's a lot of stuff you can do, and once you get the basics of what each skill does, you have a lot of control with where you want to take the run every time. The game is filled with tiny decisions that ultimately result in your final build, and it's really fun to test out different skills and combos to see what works. During your attempts, you gain money that you can spend on buying new characters, weapons and permanent abilities. 
There are also different areas and the runs get a little bit harder every time you win. The time limit aspect of the game felt cool at times, but sometimes kind of pointless. In situations where you're struggling to survive during the last couple of minutes, it adds a lot of tension, which is great. But sometimes when you've managed to scrape together a decent build, it just feels kind of like a waste of time. Once you get the hang of it, the game becomes kind of easy, and getting a god build is not hard at all, and I wish that you could skip to higher levels of difficulty faster without having to spend 20 minutes every time stomping through the easier levels for only marginal increases in difficulty. Also, the most difficult part of the run is usually around 6 minutes in, so if you can make it past that, the rest of it can feel kind of pointless. I love pixel art. It's how this game caught my attention in the first place, and while the game looks great from the characters to the monsters to honestly everything, some parts of the visuals did annoy me. Like, as an example, all of the enemies are green and if one touches you, you take damage. Your bullets are white, and the enemy bullets are red. Sounds simple, right? Just avoid the green and the red stuff. But no. For some weird reason, some of your abilities and summons are green as well. In the beginning this doesn't matter, but during the latter half of the 20 minutes, when the screen is completely filled with enemies, abilities and bullets, it can get really confusing at times when the game doesn't do a good job of visually relaying the information of what should be avoided and what shouldn't be. But aside from those somewhat small complaints, the game is already good. It's still in early access, and I just scratched the surface of it. I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for the actual release. If you like these types of bullet heli roguelikes, you should check it out as well. Moving on to the next title, Fantavision is a puzzle game made by Japan Studio, released in 2000 as a launch title for the PS2. While I had the PS2 as a kid, I never actually had this game, but it was available for free on PlayStation Plus, so I just played it on my PS5. I actually had a lot of trouble getting this game to work. Every time I tried to play it, it crashed almost immediately after getting into the game. I had actually given up on playing it, but then I took a break, ate some dinner and gave it one more try, and it just randomly started working perfectly. No clue what that was about. There is not much to say about this game gameplay-wise. You point your cursor towards flying fireworks, chain fireworks of the same color together, and then hit the circle button to detonate them and gain points. If you don't manage to do that, your HP gets lowered and you lose the game. It's an old game, but it does what it's supposed to do with no issues. The gameplay is just not all that interesting to me. What I did find really cool about this game though, was the visual aesthetic. Everything in this game is drenched in this early 2000s futuristic aesthetic which is displayed in these wild, technologically inspired graphics. I love this style of visuals and I thought it looked sick back then and it still hits hard 20 years later. Like, look at just the start menu in this game. It's so busy and colorful but still very pretty. That thing in the upper right corner reminds me of those old mp3 players that had this kind of animation dancing to the tune of the music on that tiny screen. I love the barcodes and the crazy fonts, and I like that for some reason the whole screen is in 2D graphics, except for that one spinning selection thing. The whole game actually reminds me of those old visualizers in music players back in the day like iTunes and such. The music also absolutely slaps. I'm not super knowledgeable about genres for electronic music, but some of the tracks on here kind of remind me of those 19th ambient jungle mixes, but slower. I'm sure that there is an actual genre name for this, but whatever, it's just cool music. Aesthetically, the game is such a cool little time capsule to 20 years in the past, and in that aspect, a pretty interesting experience. In terms of gameplay, it's not that interesting at all, but if the aesthetic seems cool to you, it can be worth checking out. Now to the final game, Omori. Released in 2020, is an RPG with turn-based battle mechanics developed by Omocat. 
The game tells a story of a group of friends and the events that occurred in their childhood and how those events have affected them in the present day. We accompany the main character through dream sequences and events in the real world as the truth of what really happened in the past is slowly revealed. This game looks and sounds fantastic. The visuals are mostly done in pixel art, except for some things like close-ups of the characters, which are drawn in this rough crayon style, which gives the game a pretty unique look. The environments are surreal and colorful, and the game does a great job of working within its pixel art and choppy crayon animation limits to tell a genuinely captivating story. The music is fantastic and matches the story really well from the more somber moments all the way to the crazy boss fights. The vibe of this game kind of reminds me of Undertale. Omori is filled with that same kind of quirky and random humor, which is pretty hit or miss in my opinion, but when it wants to get serious, the game conveys those darker themes extremely well. I feel like switching back and forth between the silly stuff and the serious stuff can be kind of jarring in games, but this game does a great job of balancing between the surreal and the real, just because of how the story is structured. Omori felt genuinely scary and uncomfortable to me at times, which just shows how well everything is executed in my opinion in regards to visuals, sounds and story. Speaking of the story, it's definitely the highlight of this game, and since it's such a story heavy game, I'm not going to go into spoilers. But I do have to say that I played it till the end, and it was 100% worth it to do so. The story is genuinely touching, and it hit me like a ton of bricks multiple times along the way. I'm still thinking about it now, making this video, and I doubt I'll forget it anytime soon. The story does take a lot of space in the game though, and there are many parts of the game when you're not really doing anything outside of just absorbing the visuals and reading the dialogue. So, if you decide to get this game, please recognize what you're jumping into. The turn-based combat system in this game is for the most part nothing out of the ordinary, except for the rock-paper-scissors style emotion system, which adds an additional layer of complexity to the battles. Basically, each of your characters and the enemies can be affected by these status effects that affect your stats and also have this rock-paper-scissors style power system as well which gives you the ability to strategize further with the use of the various abilities that you have in the game. The boss fights on here are great and they got me to the game over screen a couple of times during my playthrough, but the normal enemies feel like kind of a waste of time in an already somewhat long game. Once you've seen what kind of funny or cute design they might have, they're pretty much just there for the possibility to grind XP and money if you get stuck somehow. All in all though, I really enjoyed this one. I'm not sure if I did a good job of explaining how great this game actually is, but because this is one of those games that you should jump into blind, I don't feel like I should go too in depth. I highly recommend this one if you like story focused games with turn based battles. Just as a warning, this game does explore some dark themes like depression and so make sure you are okay with that if you decide to get this game. This time around I feel like I got really lucky with the games that I got from the randomizer and I enjoyed playing all of them. I probably wouldn't have ever taken the first step towards playing them if I didn't do it this way, so I'm glad that I did it and managed to experience some fantastic games because of it. I saw in the comments of the other video that some of you were inspired to try this as well, and that's really dope. If you actually do end up trying this, I'd love to hear what games you got and if you like them or not in the comments. For myself, I'll probably end up making this a series on my channel where I'll try to play through all of the games that I have. It'll probably take a while to complete as I'm still buying new games for some reason, so the list might just keep getting longer. These videos kind of take a long time to make as well, as if I actually happen to get a really good game like Omori this time. I have to actually play it till the end to give a more informed review. But yeah, I'll make other videos in between these, but you can expect more episodes of this series sometimes in the future. But yeah, that's the video. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like and if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe. And that's about it. I hope you have a great day.